Hello, everyone. Um, we will explain now this collaboration from our side, from a startup side. Um, my name is Sarp, uh, and I am the co-founder of InMapper, and I am responsible for the maps design and user interface of InMapper. And uh, I graduated at Istanbul Technical University as a geomatics engineer. And the other co-founder, Salih, is computer engineer. And we are friends uh, from Istanbul Technical University <coughs> since 2003. And after the education, I worked in Germany, in Hanover, for four years on geoinformatics. Salih worked uh, in Istanbul for telecom sector as software development engineer. And after all these experiences, we combined our mapping and software skills and started our startup journey in 2015. So we spent our nine, people spent 90% of uh, their times in indoor buildings, such as airports, such as shopping malls, of course, and universities like here. However, uh, they cannot find easily what they are looking for uh, in these buildings. And these classical arrow signs or flyers cannot solve this problem and causing poor indoor experience. At this point, we present to you InMapper as your indoor guide. InMapper is an interactive indoor map platform and can be integrated into the various apps websites or mobile kiosks. So using with them, you can navigate in the building and you can search in the building what you are looking for. Our customers are here, airports, airlines, shopping malls, and they are huge companies. And it's very hard working with them as a startup. There are, there are here some challenges. For example, there is no single point of contact. There are different departments. There are different managers. And it is so hard to reach the right person. And sometimes it takes, after the first meeting, there are complicated and long internal processes, deal processes, and sometimes it takes more than six months to sign a deal. And this long duration can be fatal for a startup. We must be fast. A solution, uh, there are some organization models for uh, corporates working with startups. And Turkish Airlines uses here the internal innovation unit model. This means they have an innovation team. And this team knows our product, knows our features, and match them uh, with the needs and with the uh, requests of the business units in the company. And they manage all the internal processes, all the deal processes. And as a result, uh, we implemented three different projects with Turkish Airlines, with the R&D department, with the mobile department, and the, with the operation department. And we think this is a success story. In short, we produced interactive airport maps and integrate them to the airline and airport apps. And visitors can navigate and, uh, in the airport and discover the airport. So in Turkey, we are working with airports like Istanbul Sabiha Gökçen, uh, with airlines like Turkish Airlines. And Salih will now detail uh, our case studies with Turkish Airlines. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Sarp. I have a question. Uh, what is the longest non-stop flight that you have ever taken? How many hours? 14. 15. 12. <laughs> okay, if you uh, Google it, uh, the record of the Turkish Airlines is 18 hours uh, from Istanbul uh, to Buenos Aires. But it's not true, actually. Google says wrong because uh, the right number is 24,000 hours, 24,000 hours. How possible? It is our journey with the Turkish Airlines in Mepper. <laughs> because uh, we met with them uh, in the accelerator program uh, in, at the mentor session time. 
and uh, we met them and we uh, uh, defined what uh, we are doing, we told, told them, and, uh, but we are at that time just two months uh, old startup, the tiny startup, baby startup, and they, they were like t uh, 83 years old giant company. So it's very hard to communicate them, very hard to uh, prove them you are doing the right thing. Uh, actually, it's true, we are not ready at that. We were not ready at that time. We had, our solution is not a real solution at that time, but uh, we are uh, a startup and we were a startup. We uh, joined different accelerator programs. And the students, uh, the, my friends, I advise you if you will be an entrepreneur, if you would like to be a startup company, these uh, incubator centers, accelerator programs are very uh, vital for the startup companies. And uh, now we are at the Guarantee Partners uh, Accelerator Program and they uh, uh, gave us many supports. One of them is the mentoring sessions and one of them is our uh, user interface and user experience side because uh, we were not good at that part and they support us at uh, that our weak point and we improved our product uh, as a good solution. At that period, uh, we didn't uh, stop communication with the Turkish Airlines. We, keep, uh, we kept communication with them and we uh, told our improvements to them uh, maybe a month, monthly. Uh, then uh, they said, okay, we would like to uh, do a POC, proof of concept, with you at our uh, R&D center. Then we said, okay. Then uh, we mapped their uh, four stores and uh, big, huge uh, R&D campus, and they used it with their employees and also their visitors used use them. And they asked us, uh, could you please uh, add the function of uh, feedback button? Then we uh, immediately add that function. Then we collected some feedbacks from the uh, employees and the visitors. Then uh, after uh, three months, uh, they uh, satisfied the um, maturity of our product. And at that time, they were uh, planning to move uh, to a great move to their new homes, new home, Istanbul Airport. And they uh, had in the uh, operation unit had a, a solution, need a solution. Uh, before moving to Istanbul airport, they would like to give some uh, trainings to the, their employees. They would like to uh, train them before moving there. So they ask us, uh, do you, did you, could you uh, map the, that huge uh, airport? Because Mr. Vedat uh, said that it's very huge, the largest uh, terminal building in the world, and also the apron's uh, area. But uh, then we said, okay, we uh, worked a lot to uh, provide that solution. And uh, after that, we uh, served that solution to them. Their employees uh, were using them, still are, they are using. But uh, our aim to go at the top is their application, their Turkish Airlines application to integrate our solution to, uh, into the application. So uh, we stepped all these uh, steps and we climbed them and now we are at the top of the uh, uh, steps. And uh, uh, now we integrate our maps into their application. Let's discover with you if you wish. Uh, I'm sure you all have Turkish Airlines application uh, at your phones. If you would like to join with me, you can open that uh, application. Uh, if you don't have, uh, Sabia Gökçen Airport is, uh, application is also okay because we integrate our maps to, into them. Uh, when you open their application uh, at the hamburger menu, uh, you will see airport maps. Then when you click them, we serve three different airports to them and for example, Istanbul airport. Then it asked me, where are you looking for? I, I would like to 
uh, looking for the launch, for example. Then I'm writing CIP launch. It shows me where it is. Then our uh, magical solution comes. Where are you close to? Uh, it makes us more scalable and more cost effective at that uh, with that solution with that question. Then we showed the way and we uh, uh, guide you to the your destination. Uh, while the users are using this application, we collect all their their data, what they are uh, looking for, what where are they uh, go, and what is the trends. And we sort this uh, data analytics tools to the uh, Turkish Airlines, and they use it uh, for your uh, for their next steps. Because uh, today, journey, uh, the meaning of journey has changed. It's not only the uh, it's when you entered in the aircraft and when you get off them. It is not the complete journey. The complete journey becomes from your home to your destination point, to your family, for, uh, for example. So when you get off from your home, they would like to uh, with, you, with you all your uh, journey. And at the airport time, at the airport uh, section, we uh, help them at that section. And at your departures, or when you get uh, take, take off until the take off time, and when you get off the uh, next your destination point, we also guide the visitors there uh, until they reach to their uh, lovers, their family. Thank you so much for listening to us. Do you have any questions? Open. Yes, open. Um, firstly, thank you for your representation. Um, I wonder one thing. Um, does the Turkish Airlines implement the IoT wh while, you're, uh, while uh, enhancing the new software project? Come again? Um, do you use uh, IoT while enhancing the new software project? Um, well, we have been using uh, like the beacons uh, at the old airport. And now we are using also the RFID solution for the extended baggage tracking. Uh, we're gonna implement it to the new airport as well. We were using it like, uh, when a customer comes to the airport, he is waiting for his luggage, right? But with these solutions, he doesn't need to wait for the luggage. He, he can enjoy his time uh, while shopping in the you know, facilities like free shops and everything. And once his uh, baggage uh, comes to the carousel, uh, he just gets an SMS saying that your baggage is on the, let's say, seventh carousel. You can take it up from there. So that's it. Uh, so we have some kind of a solution. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, I have a question for the people from the InMapper. I'm sure this question might contribute to the students as well. As far as I see from the presentation, you work as an um, employee, professional, and also you move to running your own business as a startup company. So I would like to hear the, the advantages and disadvantages of, of both ends. And uh, wh what is the, what's the thing that's moved you from uh, working as a professional, I'm working as a professional for all my life, to join, to build up your own company and work as an uh, investor or owner? Thank you. You can best answer. Uh, as a professional, as a, as while we are working at a corporate, uh, it's much more easy than to be a, a co-founder or a, a worker at a startup because at uh, corporates, it's uh, mostly uh, guarantee your uh, month in advance. So after uh, at the end of the month, you will get your salary without uh, any problem, most probably. <laughs> but 
at the startup side, uh, it's much more difficult. Uh, it has much more uh, advantage, advantages uh, on your way. But it's more fun, more uh, independent. Uh, we were uh, bored a little bit uh, from independence, actually. Uh, at the corporates, you might be uh, struggle. You might be in, uh, stick in a small room, but you would like to do many more things. Uh, you have more dreams, and then we uh, decided to follow our dreams. Uh, to be a startup co-founder. Yeah, with startup, you are more free, of course. And uh, I have also in Hanover my own business because I don't uh, experience the corporate uh, experience. But I see you are more free and there are no borders with startup. You have just your dreams. So. I have also a small comment on this. Yeah. You asked this to the Imepro team, but we are also talking with the startups, right? We, we, have, lots, we, ha we have like 1,000 startups in our database. And what I see is they are really happy, I mean, where they are now. But one who wants to you know, initiate a startup has to keep that in mind that uh, he is going to fail in like 80%. But it's like, the per I mean, he has to be persuasive, like, you know, he has to keep doing, keep working, and keep trying to, you know, uh, get the success. So that's. He will be succeeded 20%, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look side. at the bright side, right? <laughs> Yeah, there is no, you know, no pain, no gain. So you have to, you have to try hard. Yeah. It's not an easy journey. Thank you for a good presentation. Uh, I would like to ask you about this cooperation. What are the main, uh, so the main uh, success factors? I mean, what makes successful this cooperation? And what are the main challenges? I mean, about working this such a, a small organization with a, such a large organization. Should I answer first, or? Well, uh, you know, the digital innovation department in Turkish Airlines, uh, we are working like a startup, actually, because we, we, we also have an in-house uh, development team, both hardware and software developers. So once we have an idea, a business idea, we are doing our own POCs, our, uh, our own uh, you know, pilots, our own prototypes. And once we are done with the prototypes, uh, we get the buy-in from the <coughs> business side. And if we get the buy-in, we, we deliver it to the other uh, solution groups. So since we are thinking like a startup, uh, what I believe is we are you know, good at uh, get a, getting away with the obstacles on the way uh, while working with them. I don't know the other challenges that they are facing on the other side, but. Maybe. You know, I explained, for example, for startups, the right person finding is main challenge for uh, working uh, with corporates. And here, the innovation team is the solution, while they are the main contact always. And for example, we have a WhatsApp group. We are always in contact. Uh, and they make life for, for us easier. Although this is the uh, easy way, uh, we met with them 1,000 days ago. So it's a huge time. It's, you should be, uh, the corporates are mostly slow companies. We startups are very fast. So uh, we should be uh, uh, very, um, uh, how can I say? Let's say aligned with the aligned, company. Yes. And that's what we are exactly doing in Turkish Airlines. We are trying to keep the pace going on our side, at least. So uh, just one, uh, uh, sorry. Now, yes, uh, so you will recommend that to uh, 
to have this kind of unit which has a kind of mindset of a startup inside of the beer organization for like other beer organization to be implemented? I mean, do you recommend that formula as a good uh, uh, step forward to have a, a good collaboration with the startups? Could you come again? I, I it's like a, you say that uh, maybe a, a normal department of Turkish Airlines wouldn't have the mindset to uh, smoothly uh, to, uh, work with startup companies. In your case, mm -hmm. you are a little bit a kind of a, a, yeah, a different uh, yeah. area which, with a little bit of a startup mindset within Turkish Airlines, which uh, maybe allows this uh, collaboration to be... Uh, so maybe do you recommend that formula to other big organizations, like uh, this innovation team? I mean... You know, this mindset has, has to be in the top management's uh, agenda, let's say. So once, of course, they have uh, initiated this organization, they have created this organization. So without that, uh, let's say a startup company wants to get in contact with a huge company. What are they going to do? I mean, uh, they can just send an email to someone they know from the company, but it's going to be there, dead end. You just can't get any response. Mm -hmm. But if you have an innovation team, and as much as I know, uh, most of the companies now are trying to you know, uh, use this solution. If you have an innovation, uh, let's say, unit, it's really, really easy uh, to, to get along with the startups, with other initiatives, let's say, with other tech companies as well. So I think it is the best way to Otherwise, startups got lost in the huge companies. Thanks. And we are working work with them as well. I mean, we are working as a team, let's say. Because uh, when you consider the last example, Istanbul Airport uh, map, uh, we were already like one month ago, before, one month before the you know, uh, official uh, <coughs> move, the official move to the uh, Istanbul Airport. That's because these guys are really flexible and really you know, faster than other, let's say, globally proven uh, technology companies. So it's like, you know, it's how you get along with the startup. You have to be as a team and you have to be aligned with them. Hi, it's a, a question. Um, for the application, for the map that you have today, how do you see it evolving from what you have today? And then that's question one, that's for Mr. Seda. And then the other one for the in-mapper. Do you think the map that you have today would have been different in terms of having a collaboration as well with the IGA, Turkish, and, uh, and yourselves? Do you see that being a different layout? Or obviously some of their fixed uh, buildings or, or uh, properties that are there, but do you see that would have been different, the process? Carlos, can I take the question again? Sorry, I have Your, trouble. Uh, uh, the yeah. question for you is, how do you see that app evolving? So the map that you have today, do you see how, that? How to see? Evolving it. Evolving. Yeah. Sort of a growing, um, adding more features. Yeah, how yeah, do yeah. you see that? What is the roadmap for your app, for example? Are you asking for the mobile application or the... The, the map in itself, map, for example, do you have geolocalization, geofencing, for example, they automatically yeah, recognize who I am and then push information. The, sorry, I just interrupted you, but we are currently in talks with the EGA team as well. Uh, we are asking, because they also have their own you know, solution, but they have all these you know, beacons and Wi-Fi signals all over. So we are uh, currently in talks with them to get the SDK for the, let's say, uh, location. Uh, so on the roadmap, the first thing is to get the you know the blue dot on the map. So we will see the next uh, in the future, in the not so distant future, let's say. Uh, could you please repeat that? And for you, because you work with Turkish Airlines, obviously I believe that you have collaboration from IGA as well. Mm -hmm. But do you see from your perspective, um, if um, do you think that it would have been different if you had a closer relationship as well with the airport? I mean, from the start? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we are uh, working with the Sabia Gökçen Airport, and we are working with the uh, Turkish Airlines. Uh, both uh, collaborations are seems uh, similar. Uh, if you work with the uh, airport uh, team, 
uh, you will get some information maybe more uh, fast. But if we work with the airlines, we can uh, expand our uh, airport lists uh, more uh, fast and more uh, currently. Thank you. Um, hello. So if you excuse me, I want to mention about the initial part of your speech because out of curiosity, um, as far as I know, if I'm not mistaken, the longest flight is from Doha to Auckland with 17 hours. Uh, do you know the longest flight? Uh, is it in Turkish Airlines? I just want to I know. I blame it on Google, because you said Google yes. was Yeah, you, you said it's not correct. Uh, <laughs> it's not correct. But, uh, and I also heard that Qantas Airlines, Airways, uh, is uh, just undermining Qatar Airways with the Sydney to London flight, mm -hmm. which is kind of like 17 plus 17 and a half hours or so. Because uh, I want to correct this fact for everyone. Uh, as far as I know, Turkish Airlines fleet uh, is not allowing uh, for such a long flight. So I wanted to ask you, what is the longest flight in TK? Do you know? Uh, as far as I know, I, I googled it and it says uh, from Istanbul to Buenos Aires and it takes around 18 hours. Which means it's the longest flight, so... It's okay, you know. <laughs> the longest one was between us. You just said it was 24,000 hours, so... Was it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.